I'm Eddie Muller, and this is Noir Alley, settling ground for the most sinister and stylish films in the TCM universe. Now, if I've been asked a million times, what is film noir, then I've been asked a million and one times, what is the first film noir? And while it's difficult to give a definitive answer, you can impress your friends and not stray far off base by citing 1940's Stranger on the Third Floor, the film I have for you today. And not to claim that this modest B movie was so influential that it alone sparked the cinematic movement that became known years after the fact as film noir. I'd give that honor to a film released the following year, The Maltese Falcon. Look, you can't inspire anything in Hollywood without making money. And Stranger on the Third Floor left absolutely no impression at the box office. But years later, once cinema historians had qualified and quantified the noir trend in Hollywood, the search for its progenitor, its demon seed, led most of us to Stranger on the Third Floor. Now, if the Maltese Falcon set the stage for noir by making popular entertainment out of amoral characters, devious behavior, smart mouth sarcasm, and a cynical worldview, Stranger on the Third Floor packed into its 64 minutes more psychological dread, sweaty paranoia, and expressionistic imagery than it ever before appeared on American movie screens. All things that would, of course, become essential aspects of film noir. Now, the plot concerns an ambitious newspaper reporter who scores a front page scoop when he witnesses the grisly murder of a shopkeeper. Fingering the culprit in court makes him a star reporter. But his girlfriend wonders if in order to boost his career, he might not have sent an innocent man to the electric chair. Pretty soon, our hotshot reporter is doubting himself and his sanity. That's the setup, simple. But the filmmakers run wild with it, creating on the RKO backlot a world where dread fills every street and stairway and random mayhem lurks around every corner. The biggest blow to movie normalcy is the obsolescence of the old moral compass. Truth is relative. Who you are isn't as important as how others perceive you. One wrong move and your fate is in their hands. In a tenement filled with suspicious gawkers, only one has to put the finger on you. Lock this guy up. We got us a reliable witness. The vagaries of fate are a venerable subject, but this was the first time a Hollywood film handled the theme with the hallucinatory delirium typical of the German expressionist school of filmmaking, which favored audacious artifice over realism. You wanna see what a guilty conscience looks like? Nicholas Musaraka's dramatic lighting, Van Ness Polglaze's exaggerated art direction, and director Boris Ingster's surreal flourishes plunge you into the fevered imagination of our frazzled hero, played by John McGuire. Did you ever want to kill a man? My son, there's murder in every intelligent man's heart. The other special ingredient Stranger on the Third Floor has going for it is Laszlo Lowenstein, a diminutive Hungarian refugee who went by the stage name Peter Lorre. He'd earned international acclaim as the child killer in Fritz Lang's M, yet another candidate for the first film noir. And by 1940, he'd been making pictures in America for several years, most notably the 1935 horror classic Mad Love and a series of Mr. Moto B pictures at Fox. He appeared in this movie only to fulfill a few remaining days on his contract, but no one could more vividly and symbolically represent the unnerving weirdness that was suddenly skittering loose in backlot cities, what my colleague David Thompson called the squat, wild-eyed spirit of ruined Europe. Peter Lorre was the physical incarnation of the European-born darkness about to seep onto American movie screens. And wouldn't you know, the poor schmuck that the reporter railroads into prison is played by none other than Elijah Cook Jr. So either way you look at it, the first Hollywood film noir, whether you think it's Stranger on the Third Floor or The Maltese Falcon, it features both Peter Lorre and Elijah Cook Jr. 
These guys played nothing but cursed characters, but it was always a blessing to have them in a crime picture. Now, once upon a time, movies were all about maintaining order and the status quo. No matter how far your life ran off the rails, a nickel could buy you a double shot of reassurance at your local movie theater. But that all began to change on August 16, 1940, when RKO turned this little programmer loose in America's cinematic bloodstream. You'll see, things really are stranger on the third floor. <laughs> 